emissions and today we're going to be looking over this 2017 Dodge Ram. Uh, I'm going to make this video relatively short. This is a loaner while my truck's in the shop and I wanted to take a moment and just go over some things with you, give you my opinion on it. I've had it for about a week. Without further ado, we'll kind of jump right into it and uh, give you my, my quick outlook on uh, Ram 1500. All right, so uh, like I said, here's that Ram. Just going to go over it real quick. I'm going to start off with um, some positives on the exterior and we'll move our way in. I really do like the mirrors here having a puddle light. My truck has the turn signals, but no puddle light. And that's nice if it's, you know, if it's at night and it's raining and you're trying to get in and out or your wife's trying to get in and out or something to that effect. It's just nice to have that step a little bit, uh, a little bit better illuminated. Also, in speaking of the step, uh, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. This truck in general is kind of a mixed bag. It really boils down to what's important to you and what's not. The step, what I like about it, it does go far back and does allow you to, to access the bed relatively easily. I don't know why they didn't let the, uh, the pad or have the pad come all the way back or why they even have that gap there. I just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense why they wouldn't just have, have it go all the way back um, and be one piece. The truck doesn't sit as high, at least the bedside doesn't seem to sit as high as as my Ford. Now they're both pretty much exactly equipped. Um, my Ford, which there will be a review about, is a 2017 F-150 XLT sport package with a 302A equipment group. And so that's very, very similar, uh, similarly equipped to this truck. I don't know if it's the interior bed height or the bedside height that makes that better. Uh, but it definitely is easier to get into. Uh, another positive, especially again, in comparison to that F-150 of mine, which is a 2017 as well, wheel well liners. You know, you would think you'd, all, you'd get that on a $50,000 truck, but unfortunately the Ford doesn't come with it. The Dodge does. Moving right along, I'm gonna talk about some negatives real quick. I don't like the logo in the back, I, all of them. I think they're all a little bit too big for me personally. Wish they were a little bit smaller and a little bit cartoonish uh, in my opinion. The second one was safety rating. Uh, it's like the worst safety rating out of all the full-size trucks and god forbid i hope i never get in an accident and nobody driving one of these ever gets in an accident but unfortunately those things happen and you know i think it's definitely something that you should consider this body style has pretty much remained unchanged uh, i mean we're we're approaching the 10 year mark i believe it's been like this since 09. um they've made subtle changes here and there especially if you get a higher level trim package like the laramie there you go um then you get a different grill and you know they've done several different things with the grill depending on the package uh different headlights stuff like that but the body itself is pretty much unchanged also your exhaust so this is kind of two-part first is exhaust sounds fantastic on this truck and i will insert a cold start clip here I've never ha experienced this and I don't know how often somebody that drives a 1500 truck is actually going to experience something like this. Um, but the exhaust facing straight back apparently uh, can cause, you know, things like campers and other things that you may be towing quite often uh, to get a lot of that exhaust build up soot and stuff like that on the front of it. Um, so you know, take that or leave it. Uh, again, I haven't personally experienced that, but I have heard of that being an issue with having the exhaust come straight out the back. We'll go into the interior real quick and we'll talk about that. All right, so first of all, again, this is a loner. Uh, this is much dirtier than I keep my vehicles, uh, but I'm not going to be, uh, you know, washing and detailing a loner. All right, so now we're uh, here in the interior and wanted to go over a few things. Um, obviously we're talking about good, bad, a little bit of my opinion and why I went with the Ford over the Dodge, things like that. The interior has a lot to do with it, guys. <laughs> it does not like uh, tall guys. You know, you can have the seat further back and you can fit, but then you just completely lose your, your armrest on the side. Um, and, it, and even the, the center armrest console, most of the time when I'm driving, my elbow is actually off the back edge of this armrest. And I'm only, I'm only 5'11", guys. I'm not... I'm not 6'5 and complaining that I don't fit well. Uh, I'm fairly average height. This door panel, uh, complaint I do have with it, and this kind of actually pertains to the, the truck in general. There's a lot of different materials going on in here. Um, sometimes that's okay if they, if they work well together. And in this case, for the most part, they do work 
okay together. The difference in material is, is a lot more obvious in this brown um, in, in this section here on the door panel and you know dash and things like that. Um, mainly because, especially on the door handle, I mean, you've got 10 different materials here. You've got, you know, kind of a hard plastic that's similar to the tan, uh, and then this is kind of a rubberized. Um, this is more of a vinyl-ish foam, expanded vinyl something. I don't know what the technical term for it is. And this section here in the middle is like vinyl fabric over a foam backing. And then you have this bottom piece, which is what looks to be, uh, like, you know, like aluminum. This is more of a painted plastic. Then you have this plastic, which is a hard plastic, which is different than this hard plastic. And then you have chrome, and then you have black. Seems excessive, you'd think they'd be able to uh, pare down the material you're used to, to maybe just a handful, but 10 seems excessive on, on the door panel. But functionality is good. Uh, the windows, uh, the window switches are the kind that, you know, nowadays they're pretty regular, but um, the automatic up, down, that no matter what you do, it stops the window. And so you don't have to sit there and fight with it. Moving on here to the seat, I give overall seat comfort probably an eight out of 10. I think that the seat backs are great. The seat bottoms could stand to be, I don't know, they're pretty flat, which if you like that, uh, it's very common in FCA products for that to be flat. If you're used to driving a Chrysler, Jeep, or Dodge, uh, that'll be normal for you. The overall length of the bottom cushion, I wish it was maybe just a little bit longer. Everybody can be picky and seats are one of those things that some people will love and some people will hate, but I, I think they're pretty good. Um, another complaint would be, again, at this price point, the lumbar being only uh, two-way adjustable it only in and out no up down it'd be nice if it went up and down again guys we're, we're talking about a fifty thousand dollar truck so uh yes you're getting a lot of vehicle for that money but at the same time there's some things that you would think that they would do uh and they haven't and that goes for every brand glove boxes you get two uh they're both we'll, we'll call them you know maybe barely adequate uh but they are there. One thing I do want to point out with the glove boxes as well as the center console, which we'll go ahead and get into, uh, you get a nice top section here. This does come out for whatever reason. I hold change. Then over here you get your USB auxiliary and a, uh, this is also a USB, but I think this is a charge only port. And then you have a deeper section, which isn't real deep or large, um, but you know, it'll do. It's not as big as the one in my Ford, that's for sure. I know I can actually put my uh, 17, or I think it's a 17, it might be a 16 and a half uh, inch laptop down in my center console, have it plugged into the outlet in the back, run the wire over, leave it in there. And this is where my point is uh, headed. I can then lock it in that glove box. Now, how good is that lock? Yeah, I wouldn't put anything that you'd, uh, you know, I wouldn't put grandma's jewels in there because, you know, if something happened, it would be easy enough for somebody to get in there that was really uh, determined. But uh, it's just a nice peace of mind to know that, you know, nobody can just, you know, maybe if you leave it at a dealership to do an oil change or something, you can just lock it and know that, you know, nobody's gonna get in there uh, without damage in the vehicle. And then of course, at that point, you'd have uh, proof that, that something happened. So, uh, but yeah, so the, the center on, armrest does not lock and neither of the glove boxes lock. Uh, you do have your 150 watt, uh 115 volt outlet here on the front you do not get one in the back uh like the ford has one in the in the center console in the rear uh which is nice to have too one thing that dodge gets the ford doesn't and i'm pretty sure at the same price point you would also see this in the chevy but i could be wrong is the dual uh zone automatic climate control that's a nice plus i like having that a lot the ford doesn't have it so that's a little bit of a disappointment also, as far as comfort goes, this does offer heated seats and heated steering wheel. Uh, the F-150 that I have does not have the heated steering wheel at this price. Uh, that's an option, again, uh, similar to the wheel well liners, which you would think is not really all that expensive. Um, you do have to really step up your trim level in order to get those things. Um, it's just interesting to have you know, heated seats, heated mirrors, and the defroster in the back, but no heated steering wheel unless you step up in the Ford. It's just a little odd. Uh, infotainment system, when this Uconnect 8.1, I believe is what it's uh, labeled as, came out, it definitely leapfrogged everything else in the segment. It's starting to fall behind now as other ones have caught up uh, and, and gotten a little bit better. Not necessarily in performance. Uh, this is still, I would say, in 
it, in the top, if not the top, performing um, infotainment system. It's just starting to show its age, in my opinion, uh, with the clarity of uh, the image itself. You know, so maybe updating um, the screen and camera for the backup camera, those kind of things may extend the life of it. Uh, but my guess is they will come out with a newer version and when they do, it'll probably leapfrog again, uh, everybody else that's out and they'll be playing catch up with, with FCA for a while. So um, moving past that, you know, no real complaints about that. In the two weeks I've had it, I've only had a couple of instances where I've started the truck and the volume knob, you know, didn't do anything for a couple of minutes and then it kind of caught up and it would, you know, jump back and forth or whatever. Uh, but that's it. This thing, I will not spend much time on the little hockey puck knob for the gear selector. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I think there's other options they could have done that would have, I would have liked more. Um, but kudos again, at least, you know, for thinking outside the box and doing something different. It's just, I think in this case, this is a little bit of a flop. Uh, I have gotten more used to it. Many of you may know if you already drive a full-size truck and you do a lot of towing or maybe even you know live or work in a downtown or a metropolitan area. Um, some places are tighter than others, and sometimes you catch yourself having to you know maybe pull forward, to back up, and pull forward again to get out of a parking spot or something to that effect. And going from drive to reverse and drive, to, it's just it, you know again I'm, I'd probably get more used to it the longer I had it, but. In my, it's just very easy to accidentally go one too far, uh, or maybe not not quite far enough uh, when you're going over to drive, and um, and you know, so just not a fan. Uh, we'll move over here to the gauge cluster. Uh, no major complaints. Only thing I will say uh, is there's no way for you to be able to display what gear you're in when you're in automatic or drive. Uh, it only appears when you are using the uh, gear selector here on the steering wheel, which is more of a gear suggestion button uh, than a selector. But uh, that being said, my Ford does offer that. All you have to do is on the uh, selector, there is the manual shift buttons. You just press up on that and it displays all six gears uh, and allows you to see what gear it's in by highlighting it. We're gonna talk about the steering wheel. Um, a couple of different materials again, but you know, that seems to be the, the, the trend. This brown in general, by the way, if I didn't mention it, I just don't like it. It's it's not so much that it's brown. I'm fine with a, with a tan and brown color scheme in a car. I just, the brown itself in certain lights does look a little bit purple or burgundy and it, it just kind of throws the whole look off. This I'm not a huge fan of. I did get used to it, but like, this i just think they could have done better uh and just because i can get used to it doesn't make it okay necessarily doesn't make it bad because i don't like it but that's my opinion um i wish they had more of a regular up down left and right as opposed to this setup while we're on this subject if you can notice because you don't have any kind of selector other than this and and these are more of a suggestion there's no sport mode um and i, I don't see and again, maybe I'm just missing it, uh, but I also don't see any tow haul mode. So maybe it's somehow, you know, it's automatic when you when you hook up your uh, your lighting pigtail. Maybe it's automatic, but I uh, find it interesting, no sport or, or tow haul mode. But that's it for the front seat. Um, we're going to move on to the back seat just real quick, knock it out, and then that'll be it. All right, guys, this is the back seat. Um... I'm going to start off with the pros uh, because those are uh, a shorter list. Um, I think it's a good thought to have these hangers against the back. It definitely helps when you do have coats or you know, maybe you went and picked up dry cleaning or something to that effect. Um, it's not blocking these back windows here when you're driving and um, eliminating some of the visibility uh, in that blind spot or creating a blind spot. So uh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> Other than that, uh, this is definitely one of the pluses here. It's a little subwoofer. I think it's an 8-inch subwoofer. Um, this is part of the Alpine stereo system that is in this truck, again, at the same price point as my Ford, which uh, definitely completely kicks the Ford's ass in, uh, excuse my language, uh, in the stereo department. Um, sounds a lot better, uh, but 
you know, that's just, again, what's important to you is the most, uh, uh, the most important thing when, when making those selections. I hope I can just maybe shed some light on some of the things that uh, either I like or, or dislike. Um, moving on, obviously you saw this here. Uh, this folds out, which allows you to have a flat load area. Um, but, you know, there is a gap uh, in the seat, especially when the seat, like on the driver's side, is not all the way back like it is here on the rear or on the uh, passenger side. Uh, which I understand, obviously, you wouldn't want to have this up and your passenger go, you know, running it back or you go running your seat back and crush or break or get this pinched or whatever. So I understand it, but it's not really a flat floor if there's a bunch of gaps. Um, and so it's better uh, and it does actually offer you when it is down a little bit of an area where you can kind of put stuff underneath and on top. So it gives you kind of dual layers, a shelf almost, which is nice, but... I just would rather have a flat floor. Um, I think this is the price you pay for the earlier mentioned ease of access into the bed. Uh, I think because the whole truck itself sits a little bit lower in, on the chassis, um, you're able to get in and out of the bed a little bit easier, but the sacrifice is you have this very large hump in the middle um, and no flat floor, or causing no flat floor. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is the middle seat here, or lack thereof, I mean, you do get an armrest, and when that folds down, you do have two small cup holders in there. Um, and then you have two cup holders here, but that's it. And so if somebody's in the middle, then you can't use those cup holders. You can't really use those cup holders. They're not going to be very comfortable. You don't have, like you do in the front, um, cup holders in the arm pockets. Uh, so you're stuck with, with no cup holders, unless you have maybe a, an infant there and you can still use these here on the ground but i don't know just not a fan so um wrapping up the back seat here not having a flat floor kind of sucks um ha being able to fold those out is nice but not having a flat floor and this middle seat practically unusable uh for an adult for sure i mean you could get it you could sit there but you wouldn't be comfortable and you wouldn't want to be there long uh so that's it guys the final thoughts on the truck if you're looking for a one to two year old truck, this would be the high on the list. If you're looking for brand new, 2017 or 2018, I would definitely look at it, uh, but it wouldn't be high on the list. Just because the overall feel is dated. Um, performance is not, but overall feel is kind of dated. Your interior quality, exterior, obviously, Again, you pull up next to one that's eight years old and it looks the same, that's disappointing. Again, used, definitely. That 2015, 2016 model year is, is a good year. Um, compared to other trucks on the market, they were doing things that were taking them beyond where those other trucks were. Uh, they have the eight-speed transmission that happened in 15, which you know, you're know you just now getting uh, the 10 speeds and stuff in the Ford and the Chevy. Um, I have not drove one of those, so I don't know how great they are, but I love this eight-speed. It's pretty much the same transmission that's in my wife's Grand Cherokee. Uh, it's that ZF 8-speed, and I'm telling you, it's it's smooth, quick shifts. Um, it definitely keeps the truck in the power band. On paper, you know, 0 to 60 times and things like that, uh, That, for instance, my, my F-150 with the 5 liter on paper says that it's a little bit faster, 0 to 60. You know, you, that may be, may be true. Obviously, I haven't raced them, uh, but I can tell you just driving around town, just having that eight speed, and it does have a little bit more power than the five liter, does weigh a little bit more too. So um, normal driving, uh, downshifting to pass, those kind of things. It's just, it's quick, it's seamless, and, and you're, you're on your way, which is huge positive for, for Dodge. Another thing I'd suggest is if your dealership will let you, make sure you don't, make sure you read what you're signing or don't sign anything, but if they'll let you take it home for the night and do it that way, that I highly suggest that. You do not get enough of a, sample size if you will of the truck uh when you're just driving it around their little loop that they make you go on um you need to go and take all of those trucks from those different dealerships and drive on the same road uh go to your house go to work whatever it is you know something a normal commute where you can really compare you know this road feels a little rougher in this truck compared to that one um as opposed to driving trucks at different locations um, on different roads that honestly most of the time you're probably not going to be used to um, you don't typically drive around that dealership or whatever the case may be so 
highly recommend that and definitely tell you to look at all your options don't uh, don't be biased it's not like it used to be they're all good trucks they all come with decent warranties that's my final thoughts guys um, I hope this helps if you're looking at buying a, a newer truck uh, again this was just a loaner and I thought I'd take advantage of the time sorry it's been so long since I've made a video um, just work's been busy I will be following this up later with a couple of videos um, first will be a review of my f-150 uh, next will be probably a video on my experience at that dealership um, some of the issues I came across, how I dealt with them, and where I'm at today. So uh, look forward to seeing you then. Keep an eye out for that. Definitely uh, hit the like button if this was a good video and it helped you. Feel free to comment below. I try to answer all of those comments, especially, obviously, any questions. Um, and also hit the subscribe button so you'll know when uh, those other videos come out. Thanks again, and hope you all have a great day.